Hi and welcome back. Today we're on EDM 513 and we are going to talk about fraction division problems today. Now before we get started with that, I do want to do a little bit of a review on a fraction of fraction problems. So let's go ahead and look at a few examples just to get our brain juices flowing. So if we have one third of one half, really I'm thinking one third of one half, so I'm multiplying across. So I would end up with 1, 6, because 1 times 1 is 1, and 3 times 2 is 6. Very good. All right, let's try our next one. If we have 1 fourth of 1 fifth, what would your answer be? Yep, you are right, 1 20th. Very good. So, so far, so good. Let's look at our, our next one is 1 half of 1 fourth, and what would you get for that answer? You are right, one eighth. Very nice. So, so far, so good. You are doing a fabulous job. Let's look at our next problems here. If we had two thirds of one half, what would you get as your answer? You are right. So we'd end up with two six. Now I always say, let's go ahead and simplify that if you can. And if you are simplifying, you have to think of what number can divide both two and six evenly. Mm -hmm. 2 and 2 divided by 2 would be 1 and 6 divided by 2 would be 3. So 1 third would be our final answer and it is equivalent to 2 6. Very good. All right, let's look at our next one. We have 3 fourths of 1 fifth and what would you get for your answer there? Yep, we would get 3 twentieths and we can't reduce that so that is our final answer. All right, and our next one, we have five six of one third, and what would you get there? Mm -hmm. You would get five eighteenths, very good. And I cannot simplify that one either, so that ends up being our final answer. Good, doing great. Let's go ahead and do one more set before we start talking about fraction division. So we have first three fifths of five six so go ahead and multiply across what do you get mm -hmm. you would end up with 15 thirtieths and as you know you can reduce that to yep one half very good we know that half of 30 is 15 and that would break it down so one half is equivalent to 15 thirtieths very good all right let's look at another one we have two thirds of three fourths and we would get what? Mm -hmm. We would get 6 twelfths. And once again, we know that that is half. So 6 twelfths is equivalent to 1 half. Very good. All right, so we have one more over here. We have, uh, sorry, I wrote the wrong number. So we have 4 sixths of 3 sevenths. Okay, what do we have? Mm, yep, 4 times 3 is 12, and 6 times 7 is 42. Now, hopefully you're thinking, I can reduce that. So I want you to think about what number can divide both 12 and 42 evenly. What do you think? Yeah, I'm thinking maybe um, 6 as well. Do you want to try 6? So if I'm dividing by 6, 12 divided by 6 would end up being 2 and 42 divided by 6, well, I know 6 times 7 is 42, so that would be 7. So guess what? 2 sevenths would be equivalent to 12 40 seconds. Very good. All right, so far so good. You guys are doing an excellent job with your fraction of fraction problems and thinking about how we can simplify those. So very nice. So let's go ahead and let's talk about some division today. So the first thing I want to start off with is a math message problem. And on this problem, it says a six meter rope is cut into three equal pieces. How long is each piece? Okay, so what we're looking at here is we're looking at a division problem. So let's think about a six meter rope. So if I would draw a rope and let's say a six meter. So I'm going to say zero here and six here. So if I want to cut it into three equal pieces, basically I'm going to take this rope and do what with it? Yeah, I'm going to divide it up into three pieces. So I'm going to try to get it as even as possible. So here would be one piece here, two pieces, and three pieces, right? So I end up with our three pieces. 
So it's asking, well, how long would each piece be then? So if I have my six and I'm dividing that up into three pieces, each part would be how much? Right, you're absolutely right. Because from here to here, that would be two, here would be two, and here would be two. So if I'm looking at that, here would end up being zero, two, four, and our six. So that would be worth two pieces. So how long is each piece? Each piece would end up being two meters. Very good. All right, so let's look at a similar situation. So let's change it a little bit. Now we have a one meter rope and we're gonna cut it into three equal pieces. So how long would each piece be then? So let's look at our rope again. And this time let's say it goes from zero to one because it's a one meter rope. Okay, now once again, we wanna cut this into three equal pieces. So if I cut that into three equal pieces, then let's look at that. I have a piece here, a piece here, and a piece here. So I have three equal pieces. So how much would each piece end up being? You are absolutely right. So if I cut into three pieces, each piece would be a third. So this would end up being one third. This would be two thirds. So this would end up being three thirds, right? So each piece would end up being a third long. So each piece would be one third of a meter. Very good. All right, so you did really good on those two. Let's look at a different situation. So now we have a half a meter rope that's cut into three equal pieces. So let's look at what that would be. So for the purpose of this, what I want to do is I am going to still draw it as um, one meter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this one meter. But what I really wanna focus on is half of it, right? So if I had half a meter, what I'm looking at really is this section. So the section that goes from here to here, right? Okay, so if I have a half meter rope and it's cut into three equal pieces, how long would each piece be? So let's focus on this section. So if we would cut this into three equal pieces, we need to figure out how much each one of these pieces would be. One of the things that might help us is to also think about, well, what about the rest of this? So if I would continue this on, I could take this and um, look at it from zero to one to figure out, well, how would I label each one of those tick marks? So let's look from zero to one just for a moment. So how many sections do we have here from zero to one? Yeah, so I would have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces or six equal sections. So that means I can actually even label my tick marks into six, right? Because this would be one sixth, this would be two sixth, three sixth, four sixth, five sixth, and sixth sixth, which would equal our one. And you can see we have an equivalent fraction here, one half and three sixths is equivalent. So let's now focus on this section again. So now if we have a half a meter rope from here to here and it's cut into three equal pieces, one, two, three, how long would each piece be? Well, we can see now that each section would end up being one sixth of a meter. Very good. So sometimes it's easier to kind of look at the bigger picture in order to figure out the other part of it. So sometimes if you expand it out, you can look at it a little easier. Good. All right, so let's go ahead and review fast some division terms before we get into this because I'm gonna introduce a new word to you today. So some of the division terms that we've already talked about in previous lessons are quotient, dividend, and divisor. So let's look at each one of these. Which one would be the quotient? Right, so our quotient here would be our seven. And remember, the quotient is the answer to a division problem, right? Which one would be the dividend? Yes, so if we wanna find the dividend, what we're looking at is the number that is the one that's being divided. And one of the ways I always think about it is it looks like that number is inside of a den or a cave, so it's in there, okay? What about the divisor then? Yeah, so the divisor would be our last guy standing over here, so it would be the six. Um, the divisor is the one that's doing the dividing. It's the one that's doing all the work, very good. Now, another word I'm gonna introduce you to today is the word reciprocal. And reciprocal, what I want you to think of is flip, okay? 
Because one of the things that we're going to do in division for fractions is we're going to think keep, change, flip. And when we flip, basically what we're doing is we're finding the reciprocal. So let's look at an example here. So we have an orange and an apple. If I would find the reciprocal of an orange and an apple, it would be apple orange. So what I did is I just flipped it around. So what do you think here about the cat and the dog? What would that look like? Exactly. The dog would be on top and the cat would be on bottom. So basically, I'm just kind of flipping them around. Okay. So, and I can do the same thing with numbers. So if I had the numbers two thirds, and if I wanted to find the reciprocal of that, what would that look like? Yeah, you're just going to flip it around. So the reciprocal would be three over two, right? So what about our next one, which would be five fourths? Mm -hmm. So if I have five fourths and I wanted to do the reciprocal, I'm just going to flip it. So I have four fifths. Good. All right. Let me give you a harder one. What about three? I know I don't, I didn't give you a denominator. Okay. But if I have the number three, what can I put under any whole number and still not change the value of that number? Right. One. So when, instead of just looking at three, look at it as three over one. So can I find the reciprocal to that? Yeah. One over three. So the reciprocal of three would be one third. Very good. So it's, when we're thinking about reciprocal, one of the things I want you to think of is keep, change, flip, okay? And we'll talk about what that means. And the flip, of course, is the reciprocal of the number that we're talking about. So what we're going to do is I want to walk you through a couple um, division problems, and we're going to get on to our math journal page. So first thing I want you to think of is let's um, look at our story problem. So we have Jerome is making bread. The recipe calls for a one-third cup of walnuts. Jerome mixes the batter and pours it into two small bread tins. If he splits the walnuts equally, equally between the two tins, how many cups of walnuts will be in each tin? So let's think about what we have. We have um, one third a cup of walnuts and we need to split that one third cup between two different pans. So we want to take basically that one third cup of walnuts and we want to divide it between two pans. Okay, now this is what we're gonna do and we are gonna think of this as keep, change, flip at this point. So what I want you to do is I want you to, first of all, I don't like looking at a whole number just like that when I'm working with fractions. So one of the things that I always like to do is to go ahead and take that whole number and put it over one because it just looks more uniform at that point. Now I do something called keep, change, flip. What that means is keep the first number. So I'm going to keep the first number how it is. Change. Change means I'm going to take that division sign and I'm going to change it into a multiplication sign. So, so far we have keep, we have change, and our last part is flip. So what do you think I'm going to do here? Mm -hmm. I'm going to flip that around. So one is now my numerator and two is now my denominator. And at this point, we know how to solve fraction of fraction problems. So if I multiply this across, what do you get? Right, one sixth. So how many cups of walnuts will be in each tin? One sixth cup in each tin. Very good. So this is something called keep, change, flip. So when you're dividing with fractions, it's, uh, I would say it's as easy as pie, but we just made some bread in this particular one. So let's go ahead and try another example before we get into a math journal page. So on this one, um, there is one sixth of a quiche in Cora's refrigerator. If you're not sure what a quiche is, I, I have a picture there for you. Maybe you recognize that. There's all different kinds of quiches that can be made. This, this one looks like it might be a breakfast quiche. So there is one sixth of a quiche in Cora's refrigerator. Cora agrees to share it equally with her brother. What portion of the original quiche will Cora eat? So she wants to split it equally with her brother. So she's going to take that one sixth of a quiche and she is going to divide it with her brother. So how many people are dividing it? Mm -hmm. Two people. So for looking at that, 
we are going to try to figure out the answer. Now, once again, I'd like to go ahead and put a one under that just to make it a little easier. And ready, keep, change, and then flip or do the reciprocal. And then all we have to do is solve that. So we have one twelfth. Good. So what portion of the original quiche will she eat? One twelfth of it. Very good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I would like you to look at your math journal page. So go ahead and get out math journal page 188. And what I'm going to do here is go ahead and expand this out a little bit so we can get our math journal page on here um, and see that a little bit more. So I'm going to move my picture over a little bit. There I am. Okay, so if we go ahead and what I'd like to do is this is math journal page 188 and we're going to look at the problems on this page and it says here for problems one and two write a number model using a letter from the unknown solve showing your showing your solution strategy with representations or drawings summarize your work with a division number model check your answer using multiplication and write a number sentence to show how you checked so let's go ahead and get started. So we have two students equally share one fourth of a stick of clay. How much of the stick will each student get? So first of all, let's think about what's happening here. We have two students that are equally sharing a fourth of a stick of clay. So what do we have? We have here, let me make sure that that's, okay, so we have here a fourth of a stick of clay that's being divided because it's being equally shared between two students equally. So we have one fourth divided by two equals n. Good. So what we want to do is to go ahead and solve this. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it over here. So we have one fourth. So we're going to keep. Okay. Then we're going to change. So we're going to change that into multiplication. Then we're going to flip. So remember, we can always look at this as a one underneath it, right? So if we flip that, we get one half. And let's go ahead and solve that. And what do you get as your answer? Mm -hmm. One eighth. Very good. So we end up getting each student will get one eighth of the clay stick. Now, how did we end up solving that? So for our summary number model, what we are going to do here is to write the original problem with our answer. So what we're going to do is rewrite the original problem. So we had one fourth divided by two equals one eighth. Nice. Now to check this, what we're going to do is do multiplication. So in order to do that, what you want to do is take your answer, your, your um, answer to the problem. So that was one eighth. And we're going to check it using multiplication. So we're going to multiply that by, okay, so instead of dividing by 2, now we're going to multiply by 2. So if we multiply by 2, and I like to put a 1 under it. So if I go across, what do we get? Yep, 2 eighths, which if we simplify that, that equals what? Mm -hmm. 1 fourth. And if you look at that, we end up getting one fourth. So we end up getting the right answer. So we know for sure that one eighth is definitely the answer to our problem. Very good. All right. So we're going to do another problem here. Problem number two. And it says three families equally share one third of a community garden space. How much of the community garden space does each family use? So once again, we're equally sharing something. So we are dividing. So what are we starting off with? We're starting off with a third of a community garden space, which is being divided between how many people equally? Mm -hmm. Three families. So divided between three families equals how much? So we're going to go ahead and solve this off to the side. So we're going to use our keep, change, flip. So if we keep, we have one third. If we change, we're going to change that to multiplication flip. Now remember, we can put a one under that, so it makes it easier to know how to flip that. So we end up with one third, because we have the reciprocal, equals, and then we can just multiply across. So we end up with one ninth. Very good. So we know the answer is one ninth of a space. Good. Now summary number model, we're just going to go back to what we wrote here and plug in our answer. 
So our original problem was one third divided by three equals, and our answer, our question ended up being one ninth. Very good. Now we're gonna check just to make sure one ninth is correct. So we're gonna check it with multiplication. We're gonna take our answer, which is one ninth, and we're gonna multiply it by the three. So instead of dividing by three, we're gonna multiply by three. And just to make it easier, I'm gonna put a one under that, and we are gonna go ahead and multiply across. So what do you get as your answer? You are right, so we end up with three ninths, which we know can be reduced. Three goes into three once, and three goes into nine three times, so guess what? Here we go again. We got our original answer back, so we are good to go, so nice job. Okay, so we have here a question, and our question for us today is, when you divide a fraction by a whole number, okay, which is what we were doing, Okay, when you divide a fraction by a whole number greater than one, is the quotient, which means the answer, larger or smaller than the fraction? So is the answer larger or smaller? So let's look at that. Is the answer, so when we have a fraction and we divide it by a number more than one, is the answer going to be more or less than the fraction? Well, let's look at this. Is one ninth more or less than a third? Yeah, it's smaller, so good. So let's explain why that is. So the quotient is smaller than the fraction because why? Because essentially, what are we doing, okay? We are dividing up that fraction into equal, into an equal number of smaller parts, okay? So we're dividing it up into smaller parts. So our answer, our quotient will be smaller. So the quotient is smaller than the fraction because basically what we're doing is you are dividing up the fraction into an equal number of smaller parts. Okay, so if you think about it, it makes sense. So basically we're taking that fraction, we're dividing it up into equal parts and you end up with smaller parts here. Very nice, okay? So the quotient is smaller than the fraction because you're dividing up the fraction into an equal number of smaller parts. I like it. Okay, so let's go ahead and we have a try this at the bottom of the page and I like these. It says to write a number story for one fifth divided by two and then solve the story. Okay, so let's think. We need something that we can share equally and we need a fifth of something that we're going to share equally between two maybe people. So, of course, my go-to is always food. So let's look at this. How about um, Amy? So Amy and her friend. Okay. So Amy and her friend, let's use that keyword equally, share what? What do we want them to share? Equally shared, well, let's say shared one-fifth of a pie. Let's go with pie. I like pie. Amy and her friend equally shared one-fifth of a pie. So now we need a question. Um, so how much pie did each person get? I like it. Okay, so now we need to solve it. So let's solve this opposite side. So we have one fifth divided by two equals n. Now if we put a one under that, let's go ahead and do our keep change flip. So keep, change, and then do the reciprocal, the flip, and we end up with how much? Yeah, one tenth. Nice, okay. So we can say that each person got one tenth of the pie. I like it. Okay, 
Very nice. Okay, so once again, you did a really good job following along and I'm um, working with division fraction problems, fraction division problems. And one of the things to remember is keep change flip. And remember flip, the fancy word for that would be finding the reciprocal of that number. So keep change flip. You guys did a wonderful job and I'll see you again in the next lesson. All right, bye-bye.